Here we have a Tmux window with three panes. The first pane runs a Z shell, the second runs bash, and the third runs new shell. If we execute the ls command inside Z shell and bash, the directory contents are displayed as plain text. However, if we run the ls command inside new shell, the output is displayed in a structured format. This highlights the fundamental difference between new shell and other shells. New shell treats the output of all commands as structured data. This structured data can then be passed through different pipelines, filtered or transformed as needed. The most basic pipeline in new shell consists of three sections. The first section contains commands that generate data for the pipeline, such as the ls or ps command. The second section includes commands that transform or filter the data, such as the where command. The final section contains commands that output the data in a structured format, such as the reverse command. This concept is referred to as a pipeline in New Shell and is one of its most powerful features. Let's see how New Shell's syntax helps with day-to-day -day activities. Suppose I want to list all the processes consuming more than 5% of the CPU. Here is the bash command we would use for this purpose. Since bash or Z shell treat output as a raw stream of text, we need tools like AWK or seed to process the output. However, since new shell treats the output of commands as structured data, we can filter the data as needed without relying on additional tools. According to new shell syntax, a pipeline typically requires three sections. In this example, the third section of the pipeline is missing. By default, new shell automatically adds the table command as the default output command. Currently, new shell supports loading data in various formats directly into a table for further processing as needed. The open command is used to load a data file into a table. This data can then be passed to other filter commands to retrieve the desired details. Just as any type of data can be loaded into a table, it can also be written into a specific format. For example, we can load JSON data into a table, transform it, and then write it into a CSV file. When filters are applied to a table, how does new shell determine which operations can be performed on a column? This is where type safety comes into play. Each column in a table has associated type information. For instance, in this example, the size column has a file size type. This allows new shell to correctly apply greater than or less than comparisons and filter the files accordingly. If a file size value is specified as a string, the shell detects the mismatch in the filter values type and throws an error. New shell errors are very clear and concise. As we can see, this error here provides much more information than we typically need. It clearly indicates that the operator applied does not support string comparison and the type information correctly identifies the value supplied in the command. I have worked with many tools in the past, but none have provided such intelligent and detailed error information. There is a special type of variable used to refer to data passed from one part of the pipeline to another. For instance, consider the first record of the ls command. If we want to access only the type from this record, we can refer to it using a variable and access the field by its name. The records behave like JSON objects, and several commands allow you to manipulate these objects. For example, the update command lets you modify the value of a field. The HTTP command allows you to call APIs and load data into a table. Once the data is loaded into the table, it can be manipulated as needed. You can use filter commands like where to transform the data according to your requirements. New shell can also be used as a programming language. It supports all the fundamental features of a basic programming language, including operators, variables, functions, and modules. In this example, we have declared two variables with their respective types. These variables can be added using the plus operator. You can also find the data type of a specific variable. If you try to assign an incorrect value to a variable, it will result in an error. On the right side, we have declared a custom command in the bash shell. Here, the first argument for the command is referred to as one. As the command grows and supports multiple operations, it becomes tedious to keep track of these number-based arguments. New shell, however, supports named arguments. On the left side, we have declared a function to write a custom command, and we can see it supports arguments with names. Let's see our command in action. That's all for today. If you like this video, 
please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.